Day 26. Dear Diary, It was a quiet but important day today at XCOM HQ. We completed another research project and figured out how to use the implants in the aliens to help our aircraft aim better. I was confused as to how the hell this worked, but my guess is that this is one of those questions that I just don't want to know the answer to. Today was important, however, because today was the day we started the interrogation of the captured alien. We put him in the holding cell and shone weird lights on him from the side. Apparently, this was going to help us understand the aliens and how they communicated. Day 31. Dear Diary, the interrogation completed today, and we found out that the aliens seemed to communicate telepathically. There was a link in the creature's mind between it and that weird crystal alien from a few missions ago. The one that was scary, so the Nutter just charged in and blew it away with his shotgun. Well, now he has new orders if he sees it again, he'd have to try to stun the sodding thing. I told the research department to cut open that weird bug with the sharp claws, just to see what's inside it. I was very glad I didn't let any of the troops get near it, because apparently it reproduces by laying eggs in their bodies that then erupt from them. A new satellite uplink centre came up online today as well, meaning I have some spare satellites to launch. I used one to calm the Canadians down, because they are starting to get a little bit panicky. Today was the day of my monthly performance review, and it was good. The creepy man with no face was happy with our progress so far. There was only a couple of countries slightly panicking, but now I have some cash I could attempt to fix that. But first, I had to sort out the impending power shortage. I'd already excavated an area under the base that was full of steam, so I ordered a thermo generator to be built on that spot. That should sort the base's power out for a while. After that, and the order for a couple more satellites, that was it for the monthly budget, however. Spent it well, I thought, but just rather quickly. Day 34. Dear Diary, today we spotted another alien craft in the skies over the United States. It's a bit bigger than before, but that wasn't going to stop us. I sent up the interceptor to try to shoot it down, but after taking a few shots it managed to escape. Luckily I had another aircraft ready, so while the first one refueled I sent it straight after the UFO that managed to escape. One shot and bam, another downed UFO. Since we now know what they are, I guess I can't keep on calling them unidentified flying objects anymore. I sent the troops down after it to claim the goodies from the ship. Once we landed, I started to send the troops out slowly, as we didn't know exactly where the ship was, or where the aliens would be. Braun finally found some of the aliens, but they ran out of his line of fire, so I told the squad to wait and fire when they approached. Which in fairness, they did, however, they didn't actually hit anything. Luckily, nor did the aliens. I told Timmermans to take a shot on one of them, and he also missed. I did wonder at the time if there was something in the air, as he was a sniper, he was trained for this sort of thing, and he's still missing. Decker fired a burst from his machine gun, and once again proved that he was more accurate with a heavy, rapid-fire weapon than Timmermans was with his sniper rifle. Braun, or Romeo as the squadron had calling him, I didn't want to ask, moved forward and blasted the second alien. We were all okay for now. Slowly the squad approached the ship. This one looked a hell of a lot bigger than the first one. Something that proved very true as the squad slowly moved inside. There would be a lot of angles to cover here. Becker opened a door in the ship and revealed the crystal outsider alien that the science department wanted. Unfortunately, the man with the capture weapon was well out of range. So Decker took a shot and completely missed. He took another shot and missed with that one as well. He's just lost the most accurate squad member award with that showing. Zhang took a shot and missed as well. However, his follow-up shot hit the mark, but also did a little too much damage and killed the alien. I ignored the science department's protest while I wondered how the hell they managed to miss so often from so sodding close. The squad started moving through the ship, door by door, checking each room as they went. Zhang found an alien flight computer as he made his way through the ship. Science told me to make sure it didn't get damaged, but there was no aliens nearby, so I guessed it would remain okay. Ignoring the urge to throw a grenade into that room just to annoy the science department, I told everyone to move on. The ship seemed deserted. A lot of the aliens must have died in the crash. But the squad could still hear some scurrying around outside, so they'd have to deal with them before we could leave. Slowly the squad converged on the other side of the ship, and moved back out into the forest. Romeo moved forward and finally found the aliens. A small squad of Finn men who promptly scurried off deeper into the forest. Timmermans, the sniper, could see all of them, so he took a shot, and once again missed. Really need to think about retraining that guy. Romeo was a bit out in the open, so he threw a smoke grenade at himself for a bit of extra cover. As the Finn men started moving forward, the Nutter tried to get a long range shot at one of them with his shotgun, and missed totally. I told him before, it's not going to work, but he refuses to stop trying. Another Finn man moved forward and hit Timmermans. It was only a scratch, but he was going to need treatment once he got back to base. 
The final thin man took a shot of Romeo, while he was in the smoke behind a full sheet of cover, and still managed to hit him. Guess he was luckier with the ladies than with the thin men, if I was understanding his nickname correctly. Did not a charge forward, dodging a shot from the thin man as he did so, and blasted him at the close range of his shotgun, making the odds a little bit nicer for us. Timmermans took another shot and chalk up another miss for his collection. Romeo left his cover to flank a second thin man, blasting it into oblivion. Just the one left. The squad moved up to surround the poor sucker. As it moved, Zhang reinforced the notion that there was something in the air during this mission by once again missing with every single bullet that he fired. As did Romeo when he tried to shoot the final one with a pistol. It was Timmermans who finally broke his mystery by hitting with his pistol. I was wondering what the squad were doing at this point, but then, as the nutter moved up, I could see what the plan was. Sure enough, the stun gun worked, and we had another captured alien to play with. Mission complete, and we could all finally be away from the ship that seemed to play havoc with bullets, causing them to miss all the time for some reason. Timmermans had earned himself the nickname of Nightmare. I thought it was appropriate, but not for any good reason, as he was a nightmare to all around, because he always seemed to bloody well miss. As we captured the alien, we had another gun to figure out how to use, but the science department was too busy to get to work on it right away. As I told them to stop the autopsy of the thin man, and instead talk to the live one we had. So there we have it, diary. A completed mission, a new capture, and a new nickname for one of the more useless squad members. Things were starting to get tougher, but I thought I had a squad that could now cope with all of this. Other than the Nightmare Timmermans, obviously.